Hi. Bezel is a term coined by a Canadian economist, John Kenneth Galbraith. It's derived from embezzlement, which is what Bernie Madoff did. But unlike that Ponzi scheme, a bezel is not always punished. However, if you can sleuth it out in time, you can often make money or at least avoid losing it. So what exactly is a bezel? In one sentence, it is a longer term scam perpetrated by the few on the many that inflates assets much beyond the real value. But if it's done slowly and skillfully, it can stay undiscovered for a long while. To make this real clear, here are three examples of a bezel, plus a current one that may help you turn a profit. The simplest kind of bezel happens when a regular company understates costs by capitalizing them or inflates the value of its assets by faking sales. This sort of bezel should be easiest to find in theory, but in my experience, it is rarely discovered by Wall Street or Bay Street analysts who, as a rule, are too lazy to do physical sleuthing. And I know what I'm talking about. I used to run three big brokerage firm departments, the research departments, and I well remember having to threaten analysts with firing to get them out of the office to visit companies' premises and chat to low-level people, not just executives, and inspect products. Many analysts saw it as beneath their status to do real physical sleuthing. For example, Take Sino Forest, a Chinese company once traded in Canada. It claimed in official filings to be buying forests in China and selling their wood for profit. On paper, everything looked okay. On paper. Because not only analysts did not bother to check if the forest really existed, they did not even bother to verify there was a corporate office in China at all. The crazy thing was the company directors did not bother to check physically either. For them too, the company were just paper filings and blips on a screen. Now, fess up, how many of your own companies whose stocks you own, did you bother to visit and check physically that they really exist? Admit it, how many? As for China Forest, no one did. So the value of the company in the market grew and grew to hundreds of millions of dollars. All of it pure bezel. So finally, an enterprising short-selling sleuth traveled to China physically and discovered the scam. There were no forest, not even a head office. It was all pure razzle-dazzle of a bezel. The stock, of course, went to zero, and the directors got sued and disgraced, including a former Canadian provincial premier, equivalent to a U.S. state governor. The short sellers, of course, made a bundle. So that's one kind of a bezel a fake value created by a scam that stays hidden because of investors' laziness. Yes, the kind I advise against, both in my book and here. A second smaller-scale basil, still in the razzle-dazzle category, is Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin? It is a certified title of ownership, certified by math. But ownership of what? Of something without any value. It's like a notarized title for a square foot of an iceberg in Spitsbergen. Yes, your ownership is solid, but ownership of what? Up to now, the government did not forbid anyone from owning Bitcoin. But when the government finally does, Bitcoin is likely to go down close to its real underlying value of zero. That's the ABC of value investing. Value always meets price. What to do? Just stay away from it. However, all these former bezels are really small potatoes compared to the truly big one. The biggest bezel of all is created when the Federal Reserve Board prints mountains of fiat money, also known as dollars, not backed by anything except future bezel. Because unlike gold or even Bitcoin, the government can print just as much of it as it wants. This has been going on for decades, ever since President Nixon took the U.S. dollar off the gold standard. Since then, the U.S. can print out as many treasury bonds and dollars as it wants. To be paid with, you got it. More printed money. Basel being paid off by more Basel. And if those bonds are held to maturity, why, you'll just get the value melt due to inflation. You may ask, 
When will such a decade-long bezel be discovered? Only when the public wakes up and refuses to take the fiat money anymore, and then interest rates will have to go to the moon to force them to take it. Like, when did it happen before? Like they did in 1982, when inflation soared to 20% and interest rates climbed to 22% before Paul Volcker, who was the Fed chairman at the time, had to crash the economy and the market to kill it. Will we see these high rates again? In my opinion, yes, it is bound to happen sooner or later, although not just yet, in my opinion. It will likely take another cycle. But wait, what bezel do I aim to point to now that you can promise from today? Today, I want to point out the beneficial effect of a bezel being cleaned up. Yes, cleaned up. You see, before a bezel is found out, the overvaluation it represents floats over all assets in the market not yet focusing on any particular one. So when a large bezel is finally pinpointed, the risk floating over all the market is suddenly localized. And then the bezel heavy assets plunge in price or are written off or go bankrupt. And then all other assets in the market are shown to have so much less bezel in them and they can start going up again in a surprise bull market. Like when? Like in 1991 after junk bonds were decimated, which began a huge bull market that lasted 10 years. Or like 2003, when many internet bubble stocks burst, which started the next bull market that lasted five years. Both these bezel cleanups were the beginning of bull markets for two obvious reasons. First, they localized the bezel risk in many billions of vanished value, so all other stocks were seen as less risky. But second, exposing the bezel forced all analysts to sharpen their analysis on other assets because the investors suddenly became more suspicious, just like today. Yes, most recently, Silicon Valley Bank went bankrupt, taking hundreds of billions of basil out of the market. And yes, yes, in my opinion, this is likely the start of yet another bull market quite soon. Because quiet, uh, despite ongoing panic, the market is probably safer, just like a home is usually safer for a year or two after a real burglary, because new detection devices are put in place and because the owners are more careful. So is that it? Is it safe for going long? I think we are very close, although there is one more bank that must be undergoing either bankruptcy or an emergency surgery. It's a bank I mentioned nearly three years ago, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank was effectively taken over by the EU which forced it to underwrite the EU's expansion by accepting junk receivables, that is loans, from paupers such as Greece, Spain, and Italy. Something like a captive Silicon Valley Bank of Europe. But whereas SVB in the US did create some winners in, this, in venture capital, Deutsche Bank lent mostly to EU losers. So will Deutsche Bank go under? In my opinion, it probably will, but not just yet. You see, Deutsche Bank is such a big linchpin of Europe that it will likely be helped. However, there is one problem before the help is done. The problem's name is Janet Yellen, US Secretary of Treasury. Up to now, there have only been mutterings about how non-competent she is. But her recent interrogation in Congress was almost painful to watch, making clear her competence is very much in doubt. You can even say that Yellen now clearly represents one big bezel in the middle of the US financial administration. So the question is, will she be fired in the middle of a bank crisis? Most likely not. But soon thereafter, she likely will be. And so this debezzling too is likely reflected already in the market, just as the Deutsche Bank rescue package is already in the works. Bottom line, I think with all the debezzling going on in the market, the localizing of risk, the stock market is probably making a confused bottom here, like in 1991 and 2003, and is preparing for at least a year of rise, perhaps even more. Yes. And before you ask, yes, the massive money printing of the rescue operation will probably create a fresh bezel of its own. But that's a story for next year. One bezel at a time. That's all for today. Please comment below about this clip. Retweet to your friends and followers so they subscribe and subscribe to this channel too. 
and buy my book, The Advanced with Investors, and please write a review for Amazon about it, which I hope will be an enthusiastic one. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching.